Nibley. So if you don't know Rosalie, she has been voted Canada's top personal trainer. And Rosalie, you've been training for now over 30 years. Right. I started off actually at the University of Waterloo. Um, I played varsity volleyball for Waterloo. And the coach suggested that we try fitness classes as part of our conditioning. Yeah. And I fell in love. <laughs> I, you know what? I've been really lucky um, that I got involved with the shopping channel. And that allowed me to really uh, share my workouts with people around the world. Um, and right now, what we're going through with this isolation, uh, it's been really great to be able to, because a lot of people have touched and played with a lot of the products I've been able to look at, such as treadmills and total gyms and the QB. And now they can click on a workout and we can do it together. And how do I keep on track with diet and not just eat everything in sight? And I'm so glad you brought that up because I often don't get to talk about the nutrition part when we're talking about the fitness part. And it really does go hand in hand. And I've always promised the viewers, as soon as I find that piece of exercise equipment that allows us not to watch our diet, I will let you know. <laughs> but yes, we do have to be mindful. But you know, now I'm 58 years old and I've probably tried many plans, plus working with clients uh, and doing testimonial groups for various projects, I very quickly got to see what worked and what worked well. And over my history of working with thousands of clients and people, removing the sugar and the grains from your diet is one of the best ways to do it because you're not having to be hungry. I think the worst part of a diet is feeling like you can't eat. But yeah. when you put, I always say, put protein in your mouth first. It's very hard for protein to turn into fat. Uh, your body, your digestive system is actually the number one fat burning system in your body. How your body breaks up food. So look at the food you're eating. So when you compare, say, an apple to a rice cake, that apple that hasn't been processed, when you and they may be 70 calories each, mm -hmm. That apple takes a lot more work for your body to break down so uh, than compared to the rice cake. So you would get 70 full calories of that rice cake where you might get down to 30 calories of that same apple because your body had to work to break it down. Mm -hmm. Plus you're getting all the nutrients and vitamins. Um, so again, we have to look at our digestive system as a way that we can burn calories, but also what we put in our body can help curb cravings. Because so I think, you know, while we're being isolated, one cookie turns to two, to three, to four. And the main reason is because sugar is very, very addictive and will call you back over and over again. So first of all, if you become my client, the first thing I say, and you are serious about weight loss or taking control, is to get those items that uh, tempt you out of the house. All those items that sabotage you. Uh, because we're all built the same way. If you bring uh, chocolate M&Ms with peanuts in my house, I will eat the whole thing. Right. <laughs> no, we only have so much willpower. So don't self-sabotage by bringing those items in your home. And the next step, so say you do like chocolate and peanut butter, you could make your own protein balls. And making your own protein balls are so easy and will satisfy that craving. Uh, so the protein ball recipe is one banana, one cup of your choice of nut butter, and then you can fill it with some sunflower seeds or maybe even a few chocolate chips. So that would be the next step in helping to control that craving. And also to have the right foods around. Make sure that when you open the fridge door, the hard boiled eggs are there, the celery sticks are there, the carrot sticks are there. Um, again, there's lots of great uh, ways that you can have those nibblies without gaining the weight, mm -hmm. without getting anxious, without, and again, that sugar just uh, also not only affects your body, it affects your mind. It puts you in a bad mood when you eat the wrong thing. As a matter of fact, many of our TSC viewers watched my husband lose 45 pounds. And I always joke that my husband is Willy Wonka in disguise because he had a really sweet sugar tooth. And all I did was substitute his sugar treats for popcorn. And that really helped him lose the weight. And that's a great 
nighttime snack. I know a lot of people might be good during the day, but then at night when they do settle in, that is when they go and they grab the bag of chips or they're grabbing, you know, the ice cream or whatever it is that, that that's around. And right. It's a really good substitute. You yeah. Can, you, can, you can eat a big bowl and it's not that many calories. Yeah. And uh, if you make your own, again, I don't recommend microwave popcorn. I do recommend you make your own popcorn. Mm -hmm. uh, I make mine with coconut oil and uh, put a third a cup of kernels in, make it pop, and then add some salt, and you're good to go. How much is it uh, portion control, too, with your diet, not, not overeating? Um, right. Not a big plateful, but really controlling the portions of what you eat throughout the day. Well, that's uh, the one tip I give my clients is whether they're snacking, whether they're having a meal, that the protein should go in first. Okay. So while you've opened the fridge and you're looking for something, stick a hard boiled egg into your mouth, <laughs> you know, so as you're sort of calming the craving down. Uh -huh. And again, the great, you know, eggs are one of the most perfect foods you can get or, and, and cook for leftovers. Uh, I'm always making rather than just one chicken, I'll do two chickens or buy two roasted chickens. So then you have one for dinner and then, then, you know, if you have that snack craving, you can grab a chicken leg. Mm -hmm. So it's just thinking about snacking a little bit differently, but I think what you, what I want to get across to people is that you don't have to be hungry. And I always have my clients check. I say, are you hungry enough for an egg or an apple? And if you say yes, you're hungry, not bored. You know you don't want it. You know it makes you feel guilty and uncomfortable. Uh, the other day I posted, uncomfortable foods are make, or, you know how they say those comfort foods? Yeah. They say comfort foods make you uncomfortable. Oh, that's a good one. Talk about exercise and being at home. And a lot of people obviously um, are missing the gym. Uh, and the gym for a lot of people, it was social, seeing other people work out was very motivating, having trainers, instructors, motivating, and a lot of people need that. But that's all, uh, you know, not available to us right now. So if, how do you stay motivated, Rosalie? How, right. how do you get, well, first question is, how do you get started at home, working out at home? Right. And then how do you stay motivated and stay, stick with it? Great question. Um, I. Uh, first of all, get up, make your bed. <laughs> Let's stick into a routine. And then the first thing that you're going to put on is your workout gear. So you're going to put on that, the tights, the comfortable t-shirt. You're going to be prepared for some movement. And let's get it done first thing in the day so that it's not nagging you through the day going, I know I should move more. I know I should move more. Mm -hmm. And then if you're just starting, start with an easier program. Uh, you want to feel successful. Uh, on days that I don't really feel like working out, um, I really enjoy the floor work. So rather than starting off with a high cardio workout, I'll just get down on the floor, do some movement, and that's where the motivation happens. As soon as you start to move your body, your body starts to feel better. Your joints start to feel lubricated. You start to feel more awake. Mm -hmm. um, on many days, too, a walk or a piece of cardio equipment does the same thing, but you don't have to go out so hard and so fast. Right. Start with some movement, and uh, music is a huge way to motivate you. I always put my, you know, I always make sure my favorite song is on first, and then I start moving to the music. Yeah. So again, don't feel like it has to be this big, hard workout, start gentle. I love that, like don't think, first of all, don't think about it too much. Right. Um, just do just good, you know, make your bed if that's, and then put on your workout clothes and just move, do something. And then like you're saying, once you start going and get going, then you do more and more. And it doesn't have to be an hour long workout, Rosalie, to have great success with working out. Right. It can be right. smaller segments. Well, at shop TSC, we've, I, I, I was, oh, every Monday you'll see a new 10 minute workout. Mm -hmm. uh, yesterday, the one that they posted, I was using a pillow. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you're, if you're there thinking, I don't have the right equipment. Uh, we did such great ab work, twisting side by side with the pillow, reaching up and down, squeezing it between our inner thighs. So start with those 10 minute workouts. And you're right, there's so much online, but that can be overwhelming for people. 
because I've had a lot of my clients go, I don't know where to start, which video should I do? Uh, the ones offered at, at TSC are amazing because they're, they're really, I was really mindful about making them easy, simple. And I think that is such a great idea because a lot of us don't have equipment at home. Um, right. We don't have space. We don't, we just don't have it. And so using things around the home, like you taught me a pillow in between my legs for inner thighs. Right. You know, that's a, such a great idea. Like just using maybe the couch to do some triceps, using water bottles. I saw you using water bottles. I've seen people use broomsticks. And so right. anything you can find to add maybe a little bit more weight, a little bit more resistance, a little bit more variety. Yes. Um, just, and it gets your heart rate up too. And you're burning calories. Right. And even if you just follow the rule that whenever your phone is in your hand, that you can't be seated. So when your oh, phone is in your good. hand, you either have to stand or, you know, slowly walk around your kitchen, your living room, step side to side. Um, you, and again, so that's a big rule of mine. If I'm on the phone talking to someone, I'm not seated. Um, right now, you'll notice I actually have my feet on the QB. Uh, so again, burning calories as we're chatting. Um, again, we always think about the benefits of exercise for the body, either getting leaner or fitter or stronger. But yes, the mental aspects of health and, and you know, just lowering your chance of uh, depression, going out for those walks uh, really does bump up your endorphins. Uh, and again, these are, this is uh, research that has been done. The hardest move is the movement up off your chair, up off your bed. Uh, once you get that step, so stop, stop searching or waiting for that perfect mo moment of motivation because the motivation happens. Let's say the motivation happens after you take 120 steps, <laughs> you know, because then the body starts moving, the joints start lubricating, you increase your amount of oxygen in your body. Again, don't think of fitness as this big giant unachievable goal. It's just that regular movement. Uh, we actually call it NEAT, non-exercise activity thermogenesis. And this affects your health, not only the health of your body, but the health of your mind as well. Mm -hmm. This is something that you've taught me, uh, working around injuries, working around weak uh, body parts. Maybe it's your knees, maybe it is your hips or your, your shoulder working right. around those issues in our bodies. Cause many of us do have certain issues and ailments. Uh, what, what do you recommend for those people? I am so glad you brought this up because so many uh, of us, you know, when we have an injury, we feel that everything has to stop. Mm -hmm. And what I've learned when I've had an injury, it actually allows you to spend special attention to your healthy parts. So if your lower body's not working as well as it should, that's time for you to wake up your upper body uh, again there's say you do have a lower body injuries there's great chair programs uh, lately I've been teaching a chair class with weights and I can't believe how much more challenging it is to sit and work out with weights than it is to stand oh. and work out with weights so and let's also note that when you move other parts of your body that aren't injured it helps speed the recover of the injured area so it's, you know what, very rare do I meet someone that doesn't have an injury, or I always say, rarely do I meet someone with Mercedes parts. <laughs> <laughs> we all have a knee or a hip or a shoulder, mm -hmm. uh, but we have, you know, so many, well over 600 muscles in our body. It, you know, be nice to the ones that aren't are working well and work around it. Mm -hmm. Having an injury is not an excuse. Right. Uh, to stop moving the rest of your body. I think many of us understand the benefits of cardiovascular activity and it, going for a walk, uh, moving around the house, uh, doing, say, a jumping jack or a, a reach and tap can help cardio. But as we get older, we got to focus on our strength training. So if there's one thing I'd recommend, either a pair of dumbbells or if you have room for a total gym, you know, something that works your strength. Um, I really believe as we get older, it allows us to keep our independence. It allows us to participate. I say it, 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 it affects your longevity factor. Mm -hmm. When you're strong, you can say yes to more activities in life. You can keep independence in your life. 
So it would have to be a strength training tool, Denise, that I would recommend that you get. My pleasure. And again, show people that you love them with flowers rather than sugar. <laughs> Oh, I like that. I like that. All right. And don't forget, follow Rosalie Brown on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube channel, Rosalie. That's awesome with your workouts. And they're all free. Yeah, there's over 100 workouts on my YouTube channel, ranging from those 10-minute mini hits to well over 30 minutes. Uh, But yes, and please, if you have a question or a concern, reach out to me, Rosalie Brown's Fitness Club on Facebook or at Rosalie Brown Fit on Instagram. All right. Stay well, Rosalie. Thank you so much. My pleasure. You're making me sweaty here, Denise. (laughs) Go, 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 girl.